What's up, YouTubers? So I got a simple video for us today. We're going to deal with different welding cables, and we're going to talk about the amp rating of them, the flexibility, what I prefer, and everything in between that. So let's get into it. So this is kind of in response to a bunch of emails and questions I've had dealing with sizing wire as well as just what's the difference. So I would thought, why not show you the difference and then talk about how to pick the right welding cable. So in front of us, we have four different cables. And I'll, don't mind that guy that it's TIG, but it will show quite a big difference between us. So this, which is a new stinger I put on that cheap Amazon special, this cable is approximately four gauge. However, this is copper clad aluminum. Copper clad aluminum wire does not handle nearly as much power as solid copper does. All of these are solid copper wires. So it's something to be mindful of. When I post a chart later showing the amp capacity of these wires, that's assuming pure copper. If you have copper clad aluminum, you have to upsize your wire. So I thought I would show flexibility of all of these so you get a better idea. Now this being copper clad aluminum and fairly thin, if I just grab it here, you can see, I mean, this is very flexible. Just the weight of it will bend it over very fast, very short radius. Now this is what I use with my Dynasty. It's number two welding cable, solid copper. You can see that the radius of it is a little bit more and it's not quite as flexible as that copper clad aluminum, but this is also a thicker wire. So you have to keep that in mind. And this, like it doesn't want to flex much past there. I find that that's more than acceptable. Here's a number four wire with uh, solid copper, much more flexible, very easy to bend it into tighter radius. And again, I'll show you this guy. Like you see how like that's about as much as it wants to bend. Again, this is still considered fairly flexible. Now, when you deal in TIG torches, the difference is huge. Like you can bend this in any which direction. Now, this is also a pretty thin copper cable in comparison to those. So that does help it. But the super flex cables by this is a CK torch really make a huge difference because it offloads all of that stress on your wrist. With stick, you don't really have that. TIG, it makes a huge difference. So when it comes to welding cable, as long as you stick with like a decent brand, and by decent brand, I mean someone who uses like oxygen-free copper or just solid copper wire with a heat-rated sheath on it, that's what you're looking for. This particular wire is some made in America wire that I got off of Amazon, pretty common. That's where I generally get wire from because it's actually cheaper than it is to buy it locally. That's what I've found anyways. And most welders out there, like this is off of my ESOB or Firepower welder. Again, very common standard copper wire comparable to this. You just want to stay away from that you know, copper coated aluminum, the amp capacity is far less, which means you have to buy a bigger wire and then the cost savings goes out the window. Most cheaper wires use copper coated aluminum just to cut costs. So that's something to be mindful of. Now for TIG, you definitely, in my opinion, want super flex uh, gas hose and, and wire setup. So super flex. The reason is when you're stick welding, the fact that this isn't the you know, the most flexible isn't really a huge deal. I mean, this is more than flexible for me. I mean, it does hinder movement somewhat, but not really. With TIG, where you can oftentimes wrap it around your wrist to get position, having a really stiff cable, like I'll give you a good example, like most uh, Millers, like the Miller Maxstar 161 and most Miller torches, they're great torches and they have this rubber kind of like this or like this sheathed and their torches last forever but the flexibility back here is so bad that over time it just stresses out your wrist so the super flex my opinion is the way to go the only downside of these super flexes is it's very easy for them to get a hole burn through if you set them on a hot you know hot metal or like even my welding table here it can cut through this 
So if you have issues with torches lasting or run real high amperages, the Miller torches or uh, other comparable torches would probably be the way to go. But for any kind of precision, lighter amp work, I definitely prefer this. And it goes without saying, I should have a sheath attached to this for the first couple feet to prevent that because I've already almost burned a hole in this already. So you get the idea there. So let's talk about amp capacity of these wires. So the chart on the right is just to convert American wire gauge to metric to help some of you guys out. So let's look at the chart on the left. Based on the information there, you can kind of determine that the gauge is dictated by three things when it comes to picking the right sizes. The length, how many amps, and how often are you going to run that current through it in a 10 minute period. So that's the duty cycle. The gist of all of this, to distill it down, if you have a 225 to 200 amp welder with a decent duty cycle, aka 30-40% or so, and you actually plan on welding at that amperage, get number two wire. If you have a 200 or maybe 180 amp or less welder down to maybe 160 and the duty cycle isn't that good or you plan on welding mostly at like 125 to 150 amps, number four will take care of you. So really for most of us welders, we're only going to be either using number two or number four and number six wire would only commonly be used on 160 amp or less welders. So if you have one of those and you wanted to upgrade it or you need a set of leads, look at number six. But honestly, to make it as simple as possible, 180 amps or less, get number four. 225 or less to 180, get number two. And it's not a detriment to buy too big of a wire. It's just, I don't know if you guys have priced out copper lately, but it's pretty damn crazy at how much it costs. So using the appropriate wire size will save you a little bit of money in your pocket, which is always a good thing. So in conclusion, hopefully you can pick the correct size wire for your application now, know what is the correct size, and then have a little bit idea about the differences in cables. Now one thing I didn't mention, and I would say it's pretty important, you want to use cable that has a heat rating and arguably is labeled as welding cable. A previous Stinger setup I had for a welder, I ended up using some, I believe it was two gauge uh, amplifier wire for like a car audio amplifier. And it was super flexible, quality cable, solid copper, awesome stuff, right? No issues there. But the problem was the jacket on it was a plastic that would melt when it was exposed to decent heat. And one day I was welding, just set this down, and this just touched the edge of a plate or something that was hot, and it literally melted through the sheathing in like, I don't know, two, three seconds, and then shorted out to the table. I was able to catch it and stopped it, but it's worth noting that without any kind of heat resistant casing on these wires for welding, you're gonna you're gonna end up doing what I did and end up melting through it. Like this wire here, which I got off of Amazon, made in America, whatever, you can sit with a pretty hot piece of metal and it might turn this black, but it doesn't melt through. So my recommendation would be to avoid the car audio amplifier and all of that type of wiring. It's not that the copper isn't good, it's that the sheathing just can't hold up to heat. So definitely get something advertised as welding cable. And I'll also mention and I mentioned this to a gentleman that had messaged me. I would recommend, if you can, look for used leads or even brand new on Facebook Marketplace. When you start dealing with number two copper, you could have $200 in your leads alone. I find that I pretty, pretty regularly I can find a set of, you know, one aught wire or two or number four, whatever like a 50 foot length of it for like a third or half the price. And it's in generally, I only buy stuff that's in good shape. So good shape wire, used wire for half off. And you know, it's wire. All it needs to do is not short out to your table and handle the amperage. So that's a really good way for you guys to save a couple bucks. Cause you know, why spend $200 on some 
<laughs> stick leads when for 75 you can get the same thing just used. Keep in mind, if it's all electrical taped up or has cuts in it or is, you know, 50 years old, don't buy it. Like, that's not worth it. But if it's new, good wire, or, you know, fairly used but in good shape, try that out. It's definitely worth it to save some money. With that said, thanks for sticking around. Till next time.